Christ is risen. Christ is risen, rejoice. Christ is risen, who is God and man. God made flesh, the word made flesh, come into the world to redeem us from our sins. Rejoice, all those who have been in bondage to sin, death, and the devil. Rejoice, it is jubilata, it is Easter, it is the celebration of the resurrection, the breaking of the chains, the opening of the prison, the breaking of the old captivity, being turned free in the gospel to live a new life towards a new outcome, eternal, resurrected, restored, made whole. It is Easter. The visitation of the Lord, that God has become man, that day that he was born, conceived in the, conceived in the womb of the Blessed Virgin, to be delivered in a stable and laid in a manger. The visitation of God, that God Almighty, who is eternal, incomprehensible, above and beyond us, supernal, that he might become flesh and live among us as one of us, that God visits his people despite his greatness, his cosmic self, despite his power, his omniscience, his, all of those fancy theological phrases, God chooses to visit his people as one of us. This is how our existence then can be measured in the world. As broken and sinful people called by God to repentance and life, we live in the gaps, we live in the empty spaces, looking forward to each of his visitations. Jesus Christ, who walked in the garden in the cool of the day. Jesus Christ, who asked Adam and Eve, who told you that you were naked? Jesus Christ, who made us out of the dirt in his image and breathed the life of the Holy Ghost into us. Jesus, who was with us at the beginning and by the fall into sin, our separation. Jesus, who appears with the entire Trinity to Father Abraham. Jesus, who appears as Melchizedek. Jesus, who appears in the burning bush and the mystery revealed to Moses. Jesus, who finally coming incarnate into the flesh, nativity, Christmas, visits his people. These miraculous occurrences of time and space and place, the ministry and life of Jesus, that daily existence of him in the world seems so brief. And then there's death. He is gone a little while and then there's resurrection. And then he ascends into heaven and there's another gap until his glorious second coming. Because we are people of Christ, we live in his visitation. The times he is with us, the image in which we are made, the faith to which we are called, the absolution we receive, the body and blood of Christ, all of these times that he is visiting us, filling us with himself and with his grace. But because we are still mortal and we are still sinners, we are out here in the world living in those gaps. Oh yes, God in his infinite is everywhere. And according to his divine nature, Jesus is never any further away from us than we can squeeze our own flesh together. But there are certain places, certain instances where he promises to be there for us in the sacraments of his church, in things that are sacrament-like, in prayer, in marriage, in confirmation, in unction, in the prayer for the sick and the dying, in baptism and absolution in the supper, places where God still visit, visits us in this spiritual and physical way according to his promise. But we as sinful people, living in those gaps between those things, out in the world, though God is always everywhere, we live in a world that is frequently expressing itself as being without him. We live in those gaps in between his visitation where the world is a mess, where life can be a disaster. We live in the gaps, as the Israelites say in our Old Testament reading, God doesn't know about my circumstances or pay attention. Where is God? Where is God in the suffering of Israel? Where is God in the suffering of his people? We live in the world, as Solomon would put it, where the just and the unjust receive the rain alike, where good and bad happen at random, depending on how righteous or unrighteous you are makes no difference whatsoever. The faithful suffer, suffer miserable, miserably in the world, and the unrighteous do well. 
but not consistently, we never know. We never know from moment to moment or day to day what the circumstances of being fallen people in a fallen world will have on us. The rebels whose blood was mixed with their sacrifices by Pilate, which is referenced in the gospel, has a clear connection to what they did. But those on whom the Tower of Siloam fell were just people in a crowd. We live in those gaps between the visitation of God in Christ where we wonder, where is God? What is he doing? Why am I suffering? Why am I miserable? And even when we know it's because we are broken people in a broken world, we still look to God and say, where, where are you? We live in those gaps when we suffer, when we are sick, when our loved ones die, and when we ourselves face our mortality. We live in those gaps of life where it's easy to say, where is God? Why is he not here? Why is he not doing according to my will at this moment to give me relief in this particular instance? But our God, who deigns to put on flesh and die in our stead and to rise again, having atoned for our sins and broken open our grave and our tomb to set us free, our God is never far away. Though we live in those gaps because of our brokenness, the visitation of the Lord is what the gospel is all about that God comes into the flesh to do that thing we cannot do for ourselves, to live a perfect life we cannot lead, to die and atone for our sin that we could never pay enough for, to rise from the dead, breaking the power of sin, death, and the devil forever. We who could not save ourselves, delivered by the God who loves us enough to visit us, who keeps coming back and revisiting us, who is always there with us in prayer and marriage and confirmation and the anointing of the sick, but especially in these sacraments he has promised to be in, in the waters of holy baptism, in the words of absolution, and the very body and blood of him who became incarnate into the flesh, now risen and glorified, that which is human and divine, fully and completely, both simultaneously, to be fed to you and I, to be deposited inside us, the deposit of eternal life, to be grafted into the body of him who lives forever, into him who visits and loves and redeems his people. For this is his nature, and Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.